Hey, what's up guys? I'm Mystic. Today I'm bringing you the first episode of a Skillcap podcast where I'm joined by two members of the Skillcapped EU AWC team, Maro and Blizzo, and two members of the Method AWC team, Zuniaki and Chas. In this week's episode, we're discussing the PvP meta in Shadowlands so far, and we'll also be answering questions direct from our Discord. If you're interested in getting your questions answered in the next episode, you can join our Discord via the link in the description, and you'll be notified the next time we open up a channel to take in questions. Also, if you want to watch guides direct from some of the pros in the call today, including both Mara and Zuniaki, head on over to skillcap.com and sign up today. For now though, enjoy episode 1 of the Skillcap podcast. Okay, so we're a couple of months into Shadowlands, and we've all had quite a lot of opportunity to participate in PvP. Obviously, all four of you here have been competing in the AWC, both making it to uh, the final last week. So, um, I guess, we, let's talk a little bit about the state that the meta is in, and specifically the fact that we are most commonly seeing it be a Holy Paladin Fire Mage meta. So, we'll start off with you, Marrow, given that you're playing a Fire Mage yourself. Uh, how do you feel about the state of the meta and the fact that it seems to be moving in a very specific direction? Um, I mean, I feel like the meta is very... I feel like it, obviously Holy Pilot Fire Mage has been like dominating the season, but I do think there's like a lot of things that people haven't you know tried out yet, and also even like getting like damage cha- like changes damage tuning every week. I mean, could change stuff, and I think it's just up to people to you know try out new stuff, give like, and I don't think like a meta is gonna be fully discovered after playing like six weeks, anyways. Like in recent seasons, you also always saw that like randomly after two or three months, you could randomly like completely find new comps that are that are really good that people just haven't tried yet. But yeah. obviously, Holy Parlor Fire Mage is like really strong, and uh, I mean it's like it's just so easy to play because there's so many different comps you can play around it. But there's obviously other options as well. I mean, Red has been really good. Um, Warriors are really strong. You know, like even RMP is is like a good comp. Like it's like more like a you know, like the only really good disc or real comp, but it like has a lot of potential and stuff. And it's like, you know, it's like there's like some comps that are really good outside of that. But yeah, I mean, the, the best comps or like the most option is probably just playing Holy Part of Fire Mage with any other spec almost. Yes, there's definitely a, I would say, you know, the most played meta that we talked about holy Pally, holy Pally plus mage but uh, if i could add something i do feel like if we can compare it to you know the previous expansion to battle for azeroth uh, i do feel like there's a lot more specs viable than ever before uh just taking the, the example of something like uh red palin uh or maybe uh i don't know what else like moonkins which were like you know they were like decent in bfa but not really top tier i feel like now you can actually play those classes do specs sorry to at the like the, at the highest level basically right and like a tournament level something you basically couldn't really do too much i feel like in battle for azeroth and it's the same for shadow priest uh it's the same for uh i'm sure there's tons of other specs i do feel like even though there is a very specific uh, strong meta i do feel like there's a lot of more specs uh, available to play even at the highest competitive level so would we just say that this idea that fire mages and holy paladins being dominant in the meta is purely just people looking at the awc seeing which uh, classes are making it to the final and then just making a judgment call on the entire meta purely based off of that data as opposed to looking at the meta as a whole and seeing like actually while maybe these classes are marginally better and that's what's taking them to the final of a tournament ultimately we have a very wide open meta right now where a ton of things are viable is that kind of what you're you're getting at to me um yeah yeah in, in a sense yes uh, it's it's true i mean the, people always play whatever the highest it's chances possible. they have to win with right they, they always play and they're taking the example of mage and and fire mage because it literally works with almost any third spec it doesn't matter which it is that's why like it's so common right but i i do think there's other 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 specs in general that are good uh other way more than before actually if we had to compare it to you know but like the previous expression i feel there's way more specs that are available and i feel like the meta may evolve as mara said uh as the weeks go by i think uh, a good comparison would be last year or rather the year before last when blizzo made it to the blizzcon final with warrior mage that wasn't a meta comp right so you see Blizzo in the final on this on this class on his warrior playing warrior mage and you think hmm does that mean that this is like representative of what is the best in the game right now like Blizzo how do you feel about that yes or no I mean like uh, it doesn't mean that the combos somehow broken or something like that it just means 
be used like a far mage who actually no one actually played with far mage back then and the uh, missile monk in a good way you know like these three classes were actually working together you could play for a long game and basically views that come to counter some other comps or like that will actually are the best comp but yeah like i don't know some comps i feel like don't have to have like a high representation like some specs and they can work uh, anyway like in some comps but just like people don't want to play with this kind of specs sometimes they prefer like easy way like right now you would rather queue with fire mage than any other like spec right or with warrior yeah for sure so i guess it's just a question of giving it more time as mara said giving the meta time to develop allowing people have to have more opportunities to play these random obscure comps and try to figure out things that turn out to be good all along and just you know we just didn't know because people just were not putting the time in and obviously with these small numbers tuning coming every week um well so speaking about the number tuning actually so we've been seeing these consistent buffs and nerfs almost every other week recently do you guys think that's good for the game are you are, do you like that direction that we're heading in do you do you want to see uh changes like that um yeah i would like to see this uh, being a normal thing for the rest of the expansion um I think we had like three or four different tuning changes, smaller ones. And yeah, I would like to see that continue. Do you think that them selecting it and allowing us to just continue play the same game that we were playing a month ago would have been a really bad idea? If they didn't change anything? Yeah, like would that be horrible? Would yeah. That, would everyone just hate it? I feel like uh, it would be a bad thing. I feel like they, 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 uh, they need to continue these small changes all the time or make like bigger ones less often maybe because uh, otherwise it's going to be uh, too stale to play all right well um i think a good question at this point would be you guys faced each other in the final last week and um it was quite a one-sided result i would say for mara's team whereas two weeks prior to that uh you guys actually took the win method you took the win to uh in the upper finals so could you talk to me a little bit about the reasons why there was a disparity in the results between the two teams, given that it wasn't necessarily because of a shift in the meta and more so just, you know, down to the performance of the teams, I suppose. Mm, we watched the votes and we saw mistakes like last week, what we did, compared to like uh, we worked on them and then we just tried it out like this week, same thing basically. And the mistakes didn't happen except one game when ZP forgot to play Bottom Master. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it, right? We just put on mistakes. I mean, base, I, I think, uh, like, having different results is obviously, I mean, there's, like, lots of, lots of factors to, like, you know, count in. Um, something to keep in mind is, obviously, Renown increases every, you know, week by two. It's like, just, it's just, like, on live on a tournament game, too, so you get some new stuff. Like, Piladins became a little bit more tanky, obviously. So, I think even that changes matchups. I mean, something that, you know, people don't like think about that much as well as due to like these like like constant renown changes. Even this week, I mean, for example, Necro Lord, uh, the Necro Covenant got the Flashcraft uh, CC immunity this week, and maybe that will change certain matchups and make you know certain comps better than before. And stuff like that happens every week. But obviously, there's many many other reasons. I mean, it's obviously due to like performance on a day. Uh, maybe one team, you know, looked at, you know, games and, you know, rewatched them, tried to improve on their strat, on their gameplay. Maybe, uh, yeah, there's like, I mean, there's a lot of different reasons for why results can be different. Yeah. I guess speaking of the renown change, that's actually quite a big one. And that's a big impact in the meta developing over time. So as you just mentioned, Shaman's recently, or rather all Necrolord players recently just got ultimate form uh, in this past reset. <coughs> So that's obviously going to be a huge buff for Resto Shamans, maybe even Resto Druids in some ways. Um, have you guys been enjoying the the meta kind of having these small incremental changes every week just by having your renown go up a little bit? Not really, because I feel like it's the stuff changes eventually, yeah, and it would be better if everything was out now. So if there were like changes from Blizzard to some classes, it would be like already happening now, but they maybe don't want to do big changes. Because they feel like uh, Renown is not out, completely out yet, you know? So maybe it's going to change for some classes. Maybe it's going to help them. And yeah, I just feel like it should be already out or like faster. It's been like taking so long. Well, I suppose the biggest issue is that, like you said, it's hard for them to make all these very precise balance changes when 
you know, every two weeks there's modifiers happening, and then also we were getting gear slowly. Over and time. also, I don't think these like changes. You know, we talked about like these three percent, five percent. They are directed for PvP. To be honest, like I think they're directed at PvE. Ones, right. But they we have been doing some like this uh, master and commander change. That yes, this rally, is like that's a, obviously yeah. PvP change Obvi only. Yeah, obviously that's the first PvP change. I mean, not that many changes have been out and, for PvP. Um, they they did nerf chill streak by ten percent after doing the frost DK buff. So clearly it's on their radar to some extent, and it's not just being completely neglected. But um, yeah. So what about the rest of you, Marrow? Um, do you how do you feel about the renown progressing slowly over time and us not being sort of stuck with the meta from day one and constantly being moving in a, in a in a good um... a good but a, a different direction. I feel like it's, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just like a very unnatural way of, you know, the meta evolving. It was the same. It's it's to some extent like a, the same that same thing that happened in BFA season four where um, corruption resistance uh, increased every single week and that changed the meta in a way. Um, and even though constant meta changes and shifts to matchups to, you know, certain comms are generally speaking a good thing, I do think it's hard to balance the game when it's like the game is already hard to balance the way it is because there's like very little information on how like strong comps actually are aside from like the AWC tournaments and stuff because I mean you kind of need to see how a comp performs when the best players basically play it and not just you know anyone um so I think it's like a little bit hard to do balance changes when you know the balance basically changes itself every week and I, even though I'm generally a fan of like, you know, changes very often, I don't think it should be like a weekly or bi-weekly basis, maybe more like a, you know, a monthly basis where every month there's some uh, PvP specific changes to certain comms. And if something is obviously too strong where everyone, you know, the entire community agrees with, obviously you can, you know, like you can change something a little bit sooner, but I do think it's, you know, like, I think it's a bad thing to do preemptive changes without actually knowing what's best. Because uh, like I said, I don't even think this meta completely evolved. I don't think people actually know what's 100% the best, how every matchup should go. So yeah, I think it's a little bit bad when you you know constantly get like changes every week and you can't even really figure out a matchup. Oh, that, that leads me to a pretty good question, actually. So I'm going to direct this one at you, Cass. So Maro is saying that you know, the meta takes a while to develop, right? It needs some time. Just how much time does a meta need? Like you obviously play every healer. It's like four or five different healers. Um, so you're spending a lot of time trying to get good at a bunch of different classes at the same time, basically every season. How much time do you think that you need to get to the point where not only are you super comfortable and eat all of these healers, but also super pre prepped with meta and know that it's not going to change that much more? All right. So, well, every year when we compete in the AWC, we have like, you know, we have tournaments spread out uh, throughout the entire year. And it always feels like in the end of the year, you look back and the first cup four or five tournaments, you look back and you say that you feel like people didn't really know anything back then. So uh, I'm going to say that maybe, maybe in the first circuit, people has figured out the meta a bit more. Uh, but there's two two more cups in the AWC where people can um, try out things. So I think it could take another couple of weeks at least, to be honest. Okay, but you're saying that generally by the time you get to the end of a year of competing, you'll look back at the beginning of the year and be like, whoa, we we didn't know anything. Like, we, why didn't yeah, we do exactly. this back then? Yeah. So are we talking that this is like a year-long process? Like, are we... No, no, it's saying? gonna be like uh, no, no. It's gonna be like small uh, bits all the time. I think uh, like in in a month, maybe we look back and we say, oh, you could actually like beat a holy paladin combo with this strategy using right. this. Um, you know, especially like the people who play one class, they 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 don't uh, they don't exactly know how to counter others. You get a more like better perspective of how to counter a class if you play with a lot more classes or play a lot more classes yeah i guess that that leads me to a really good question for zuni actually so you're you're known for playing multiple roles you're obviously both a healer and a dps you're currently primarily playing a dps within your team how would you say that this meta has shifted indifferently to the past for 
DPS players and healer players? Like, how has their role different now than it has been in the past? Um, hmm. you know, given how fast-paced the game has been and stuff like this, uh, at least in comparison to BFA. Well, in comparison to BFA, yeah, I would say the the meta is definitely way more bursty than it than it than it probably was, right? In some form, and the gains are definitely uh, they're still quite long, but not as long as as they were in BFA and. Uh, um, it's harder for a healer to play in Shadowlands than it was in BFA, or harder for a DPS to play in Shadowlands than it was in BFA? Um, I'm actually not too sure you'd have... Uh, I mean, let's, let me try and compare. Like, in, I think it was definitely... It's different, you know, okay, because, okay, you have... If you have a long game, you need to be, like, focused for, you know, basically 10 minutes straight. That's not easy either, right? Even if the, the meta is a bit the pace is a bit slow and stuff. Um, but if you're in a faster meta like we have now in Shadowlands, um, let's say maybe the game only lasts five minutes, you know, five, seven minutes, but way more bursty, that's also not that easy to, you know, you know to, you basically can't make like mistakes. You have to like not overlap. You have to like make the good judgment calls every time you pop a CD or every time you rotate a CD. So I would say it's it's different, but I'm not sure if I could say what's harder. You could maybe ask Chaz, maybe he has a better opinion because he's been main maining healer this expansion too. I didn't really play uh, just too much. Um, but from my opinion, it's it's similar. They're both, you know, they're both a bit different, but they're, they're I don't know. I don't know if I could like say one is harder than the you, other. You can't like, quantify and say, oh, it's harder to be a DPS now or, or it's harder to be a healer now. Yeah, would, um, in terms of DPS, I would say it's... Oh, Mm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not too sure actually. I would say it's even. You'd say it's about the yeah. same. With another. Yeah, I mean, like, of the game. It's not just like uh, he are deciding who is gonna use CDs, you know. Yeah. It's also DPS deciding like if he is gonna use his CDs, because like let's say me as a warrior, I can like save my healer, you know, and can tell him you don't have to use his healer and anything or something like that. So wow. it's like hard to say as well because for me, because like sometimes like I use my CDs and they go to it anyway. I guess that was the thing. Like last expansion. Most players, well, like, most DPS like, players, you had yeah. so much time to prepare and so much time to discuss, and you'd know. Usually, you wouldn't have to press anything, and if you did have to press yeah. something, one thing would be enough. Whereas these days, that is not the case. You... That's not the case. Like you have to use everything most of the time, and it still feels like it's so weird compared to BFA. You know, coming from BFA, very slow gameplay to this. I don't think it's fast enough still, but it's much faster compared to BFA. Which makes it hard for DPS to tell sometimes, like, and it's like have, that's have mainly due to the crit change, you know, like the crit change. How, yeah, how that's, crit, that's kind of what like changed it. Like, as Blizzard says, sometimes you can die to your CD, and like sometimes like your healer won't even like react. It really has to be like the DPS making a split decision. Uh, just quick example against Red Pound. Sometimes you know, Divine Toll, uh, you kind of know it does a lot of damage, but it's still RNG because if a Divine Toll like quadruple crits or doesn't crit, there's still a huge difference. So sometimes like you you can be completely fine and you're going to use the CD, you'll be fine. But sometimes you can actually completely get surprised and die and have to like overlap massive amount of CDs. Yeah. Do you guys like that though? Do you guys like the fact that the game is so bursty and that you have to, you know, as a DPS, you have to take charge and, and react and not just let your healer control your cooldowns? Do you prefer the game being that way? I do I like it, but I don't like it as well at the same time because like I don't feel like it should be in the game like this uh, red thing, for example, that he randomly can win the game because he one shots you from sixty percent. Yeah, I think most people would agree that any RNG factors, so the ringing clarity can't do it for reds, or having you know the full moon's proc from yeah. the convoke before, like that shouldn't be in the game. Nobody wants that to be in the game. That's just you know no matter what, that's how it but is. Still, convoke is still a bit overpowered. Like let's say, Pumpkin comes out, you know. Pops is convoke, everything goes into you and everything crits. He can just kill you by yeah. himself in one second. Well, and that's the thing I don't like actually. Despite, the game. despite the chaos and despite the fact that you know there have been all these crazy one shots and combust killing people in less than a second, rats just completely melting people's faces. Despite all of that craziness, um, how how happy are you guys with where Shadowlands is compared to where we left BFA? I think um, it's at a good place right now. But uh, right now, I feel, I feel like it's uh, it's up a lot to to you know the the devs is to see if they continue do this uh, small changes all the time. I think uh, WoW always will always need that to be in a good place. For for it to continue, they have to do that. Right now, it's in a good place, in my opinion. They've been doing a pretty good job so far. Yeah, I agree. But also, we have to take into consideration it's start of the expansion. And every time start of the expansion looks good. 
like the first season yeah, yeah, exactly. is it is a bit fast paced it's always like this but the more gear we get the more stats we get it becomes slower and slower yeah, I, I, I talked to some of my teammates uh, the other day and I call it the honeymoon uh, part of the expansion where yeah. basically everyone yeah. is having fun, they're learning new stuff, they're just, you know, trying Excited out Excited all the time. Yeah, <laughs> some some small things are happening here and there. When when it's, when it's everything gets more meta and everything gets more like yeah, scripted, it can become, you know, a bit more boring. So that is the reason why... I want to see you, like small changes all the time. Do you think that things becoming more meta and becoming scripted is something that's going to impact every like part of the game in terms of PvP, like every range of rating, not just the top? Is this something that players at 2200, at 1800 will also be dealing with? Or is this an, an issue that is mostly uh, relevant to the top players who you know start to understand the game a bit better and start to, like you say, turn it into a bit more of a script? I've think it's at every rating to be honest everyone wants to abuse the best thing it's in every every game like let's say paladins are broken everyone wants to play paladin because it, it is easy to heal and uh, everyone wants to abuse it right it's like in every other game like uh in csgo when they like this uh, krieg weapon was broken everyone started abusing it it was maybe slightly better but everyone started abusing and started playing it. and that's the same with wow well. like if something's better you just want to play it because it's just better all right, cool. Um, all right, so let's finish off by just getting to some questions that we got from people on our Discord server. So I'll be going through these and either directing them at an individual person or just um, yeah, letting you guys jump at it. So the first question we have from Barthim is how meaningful or optimized covenants and uh, builds when climbing the twos and threes ladder? He wants to know if it's better to focus on getting his character, his character's loadout just right. So that includes having the right talents, right covenant, etc. Or if he should focus more on his game knowledge and making sure that he's heading and peeling using the cooldowns correctly. So, given that Zuni plays multiple roles, I'm going to direct this one at him. Um, Alright, so I definitely do think Covenant have a big impact, uh, especially for some classes, uh, some specs more than others. But it's also important to keep in mind that it's not just about Covenant. Like, I'm sure you could do really well too by having a non-meta covenant so it's your game knowledge and your your your, your skill and just your, your your practice communication they're still important factors to you know your success in arenas it's not just about the covenant but the covenant is still a pretty big part uh, if i could take the example of for example shadow priest i feel like or this priest in general i feel like uh, let's say you know for example both this priest and shadow priest they basically all go ventir like 99 percent of pvpers go ventir mainly because of mind games. Um, if you played any other Covenant, I'm sure you would still do fine, but it feels it, it still feels like a bit of a waste to not go Venter. Same with Palance, not going Kyrian, not having that big, you know, that Divine Toll. Uh, just seems like it's you're kind of gimping yourself in a way, right? You're like you just giving yourself less chances to win a game. So it doesn't mean that you can't do well. Like if there's sometimes you see uh, sometimes you see holy palins that are ventier, for example. You know they have the ash and hallow. It's like it's like not too bad either in, in a sense, right? There's some positive to it. Um, but I would I would I would say that of course it's still quite important to have the right covenant. Not the most important maybe, but still quite important. I would so that answer agree. your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would completely agree with that. Like you, you know, if you put a really top player on a class and have them on a non-meta covenant, they'll probably do okay. But ultimately, are they putting themselves at an innate disadvantage? Yes, they are. Like if you're a priest playing without mind games, what are you doing? If you're a yeah. warrior that's not a Kyrian or a um. Or event there. I wouldn't actually. I'll give it the warrior to be maybe honest. Not, you could get away with night fair. I'm pretty sure you could play night fair as well. Yeah, maybe not the uh, not, not necro ward. Yeah, not necro ward, but like any other like when it's fine. It's gonna be specific to the class that where some I'm pretty classes sure, yeah, don't specific. rely as heavily on their covenant ability. But I mean, priest is a really good example where they priest, like mind yeah. games is such a big factor for them, and playing or paladin, them, paladin too. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Venter is like good maybe for Holy Paladin, but... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this next question is from Aprit, and he says, How would you elevate unused specs into viability for PvP? So either Arena or RBGs. Uh, for example, he says that Fury Warriors or tanks other than Prop Paladins, you know, you know they're not really seen much. Um, so what would it take to make Fury 
on spec with arms. And for the latter, so for other tank specs, so not prop pals, but the other ones, what could Blizzard do to make those other tank specs become mm. more viable in arena? So I'll direct this one at Blizzard, seeing as you are like the warrior. So what, what, what are your thoughts? Like what would need to happen to bring Fury into viability almost on the same level as arms? And is that even something that's needed to happen? Mm. They would have to give it, uh, give MS to Fury Warriors. I don't see anything else. Either that or make a Fury really burst the spec so you can like, kill someone in one stun, you know? Yeah, I mean, we've seen Fury viable in the past. And whenever it has been viable, it's been because the damage has been so high. It's literally just been yes. down to numbers, right? You don't need all the utility in the world if you just hit really hard and you can just kill people. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah, I guess give Fury Crazy Burst or just give it a Mortal Strike effect. Those two things alone would, would bring it into viability. What about the other specs? So we have Demo Warlocks, we have Beast Mastery Hunters, um, maybe Arcane Mages to some extent. So all these other specs that are not really seen at a high level whatsoever. Do you guys think that it's like almost a bad thing that they are not seen or does it not really matter? Because then, then at least it gives the devs like less specs to balance around pvp i think it's good like i don't think every spec should be viable like if you play a mage you have two other specs like fire and frost which i mean frost is obviously not that good in pvp but it's probably better much better than arcane and you have fire which is amazing in pvp so why give them another spec it's a dps class you have a dps spec working like i don't think they should be like bonds in that spec in pvp yeah, I know in the past, like a long time ago, the way essentially divvied out spec balance is that, you know, you'd have a spec basically designated to be the PvP spec for that class. Like arms was the PvP, PvP. spec for warriors, you yeah. know? And that must have made balancing much easier um, back then at least. So, yeah, I, I share the same sentiment. I feel like it would be... Better I think it's also be. really hard to, to balance every spec to make them all, you know, good. It's obviously really hard, and I also think um, it doesn't matter how you balance it's like a class like Mage. You can make all of the three specs viable. Every spec is, you know, in in some like in whatever setup you play, there's always going to be one spec that's going to be the best for that setup. Like it's like BFA is a good comparison. All Mage specs were, you know, in season four, at least Frost and Fire were some were both viable, and it was basically like the consent was that if you play with a Warlock, you would play Frost. If you play with a Melee or basically anything else, you would play Fire. Um, and like whether a spec is good or not, like it it doesn't really like I don't think it has that much of an impact because people are still gonna just play what they think is best. Right. Like you want, you don't want to play some. Even if frost is decent, but if it's just five percent worse than fire in a certain comp, you still wouldn't want to play it. At least the top players wouldn't want to play it. And I think that, like a lot of people that are lower rated, would just copy that uh, that thought and would just do the same thing. So I think balancing all specs is really really difficult, especially when it's a, like classes like hunter, mage, rogue that all have like three DPS specs. That are all that would all need to be balanced to like somewhat the same level. People are always gonna pick one spec that is the best and you know stick with it. Yeah. All right, cool. And then what about what about with tanks? So obviously we have prop paladins. The the last question specified, you know, what about the other tanks? What do we need to do to bring them up to par? And then also we've got another question on just generally what you guys thoughts are on protection specs in PvP. And obviously last weekend we saw Drano come in and both eliminate two he eliminated two red warrior teams including mine and um and another team as well so how do you guys feel about prop heldens like should they be just a, a flag carrier should they be just like moving to that kind of role or can they be in arena and do what they're doing right now i think they should be banned from pvp to be honest i yeah i don't think i don't think prots in my opinion should be it's never been good when ever prot specs are viable in pvp they should never be viable in my opinion but uh, it's not the first time we've seen prots i, mean, you, I was it legion final. or yeah like 20, yeah, was it legion or bfa where um, um brewmasters were really op too uh we mm -hmm. also had like prot wars i think uh throughout k 
can't remember Legion. if it was Legion or BFA. It was Legion? Okay, Legion yeah, too. No. Like we, it happens, it happens. And to answer your first question, how what needs to happen uh, for them to be good, they just need to be like broken defensively. They need to have like some really broken defensive utility, uh, which basically makes their team immortal. Uh, that's basically what it requires, right? So now Palins have, uh, Prop Palins have a ton, on top of having a ridiculous amount of healing, they have like so many like CDs. That's what they need to be like, you know, like, the critical VP. It was the same with Brewmaster, I think, in Legion. Uh, they just had, like, just passively, like, just made the team reduce so much more damage. Um, same with uh, the Prot Warriors. They had, like, uh, I don't know what they had, but they were super, like, basically some abilities to make their team super tanky. Um, but in anyways, I don't think they should be, they should be, like, viable. I mean, I think they, some guy that does that, that, it's like a main tank in his guild. If he wants to do some PP, sure. He should be able to go in arena and still have a, maybe a small chance to win in arenas. Like, why not? You know, it shouldn't be completely useless, but it shouldn't be like top tier as we saw it last weekend, in my opinion. Yeah, I completely agree. Yeah. Just it's in small, one last thing, because I, I was regarding like Sidhu tweets. Sidhu made a tweet and he said, oh, I don't think um, any other player in the world could have like made it work like Drenner. Uh, I don't really agree fully with that. It's just like, I sure. think like, for example, Prot is super strong. It's just like no other top players actually bothers to play it. And, and that's why like, like most people that play Prots aren't like that good. So as soon as a one really good player like Drainer plays it, like it becomes like people realize it's, it's quite insane. And honestly, I do think like it even feels better than Holy Pally in some matchups, honestly. Um, so I'm yeah, sure like if more sure. like top healers actually started yeah. playing Prot, I think they actually might have a better chance than playing Holy Pally in some matchups. Yeah, you cannot own basically. Yeah, I completely you, agree. Like, no one wants to bother to play tanks. Like, let's say when Prot Warrior was like good in Legion, right? I didn't bother like time Prot Warrior or like uh, Brewmaster and stuff like that. It's just like you don't want to play these specs because you ex expect them to get nerfed. Because like I don't think like Prot specs should work in PvP. And like right now when the Prot Paladin is like a thing, imagine like if someone plays like a double healer basically with a Prot Paladin, and you are basically able to play it, and you and you are not able to play double healer. But you're allowed to play with yeah. a tank and a healer. And yeah. basically yeah. the same thing. I also think that just tank specs in general lead to very long games. And I, I don't know like a single player that actually, you know, enjoys playing for, like really long games where your only win condition is like winning on mana or winning on like so high dampening that the enemy healer just can't heal anymore. And you have like some tank that carries your team with like defensive utility. So I I think that's also something why a lot of people, top players and also like generally players just don't bother playing like these specs because yeah, tank is obviously oftentimes just like associated with like long games and you know, they, they're usually strong when they have good defensive utility, like this is when you said, and then people don't want to bother with like 10, 15 minute games because most people enjoy like a fast meta and want the games to be, you know, somewhat quick. All right. Well, definitely the general consensus is to just gut tanks. Um... We'll go on to the next question here. So this one's quite an interesting one, and it asks, how did you guys find out um, what class you would excel in? So, you know, obviously each one of you here has over time kind of figured out what your main class is. We know Blizzo, his, he excels at the Warrior. Marrow, you've just taken Mage to a crazy level. Zuni, obviously known for his priest gameplay on multiple specs. And Chas, I guess it's a little different with you as you're kind of forced as a competitive healer to play several of them but i'm sure you yourself feel a lot more confident on one healer more so than the other so let's go through each of you one by one and just give me a quick short rundown on how you figured out what your main was so we'll start with you blizzo oh i just played warrior all the time so most of, the, most of my games were on warrior and the play style like fits me like uh, basic stuff you know and warrior is a basic class yeah, so there wasn't much experimenting. You kind of just said, yeah, this class looks nice and just went for yeah. it and it just worked. Okay. Yeah, pretty much so. about with you, Marrow? How did, how did you know that Mage was the right class for you? Um, I mean, I've been playing like different classes in the past when I started playing the game. I mean, I was playing Charm and other stuff, but um, it kind of just happened to be that I was playing Mage when I started like, you know, trying a little bit harder on PvP and trying to, you know, become better and stuff. So it was like somewhat random. Maybe I like if I played Shaman, if I decided to play Shaman in like Cataclysm, Mr. Pondire, and I started to, you know, get a little bit more serious in the PvP, or, but like, at least to like, you know, go to like Gladiator level, uh, maybe I would have been a main Shaman now. But 
I would say it was very like random. I just I was it just happened to be that I was playing mage at the time, and you know then I became high rated with mage, and then I feel like once you get like a little bit high rated, but not like to the top top level, um, it makes sense to just stick with the class you're playing, um, as you obviously made like some uh, like you obviously have some experience already, and yeah, that's basically why I'm playing mage to this day. Okay. Uh, what about you, Zuni? Um, I think there's two very important factors. The first one is probably whatever brings you the most fun, brings you the most joy. Um, so for me, just a quick example, I started as Rogue. Like That was like my very, very first class. And I, I was like decent, you know, like got like Gladiator, blah, blah, blah. And then one day I, I just tried I just tried praying Priest. And when I played it, not only I had more fun, it also felt more natural. So I, I feel like it just kind of, it's kind of the thing that comes naturally. Maybe if you had to compare it, it's, it's kind of like the, the people that play an instrument, you know, they play the guitar and they're like, oh, they like it. Maybe they'll play the piano and be like, oh, I prefer that. I think it's the same for classes. It just, you have to try it and then see whatever feels uh, more joyful, more enjoyable and just more whatever you're most comfortable with. It might take some time for some people. The There's no real... Uh, the role is the same. Uh, like I said, like I, I started playing healer and then one day I was like, oh, I'm going to play some shadow and I like both. So I ended up still playing both. Um, but uh, I would say it depends on whatever you enjoy playing. Some people prefer healing. Some people play, prefer doing damage. I really like both. That's why I've kind of been playing shadow too because you know it has a hybrid role. You can do a bit of both. Um, and I, I still play both to this day because I enjoy both of them. Um, so I think it really depends on what you enjoy playing and whatever you feel comfortable with. Uh, so if I had to like, you know, give advice to someone who's like not sure on what to play, he just has to probably try a few different different specs. If he's hesitating to two, two three different specs, just play whatever you feel uh, like brings you the most fun, whatever you feel like you're best at, whatever you're most comfortable on. And I, I feel like it'll just... That you'll get the answer naturally. Uh, I would okay. say I don't know if you can like I don't know if there's like a general rule that says oh you're if 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 uh, you do this and this then you'll know if you're good at this and that. Well, I I look at the playstyles all the healers ha healers has. Um, I think the most fun playstyle is like generally speaking play to win. So in, for for that reason I enjoy playing druid and the priest most. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I feel like that's a fair analysis. Obviously, we have more defensive healers, we have more offensive healers. And uh, yeah, with Priest and Druid both kind of sharing their role, it makes sense that you lean towards those being the ones that you enjoy the most. All right, cool. So this next question uh, asks, if you guys feel that off-healing from DPS classes is too high right now. So obviously we know that Talons have been a big issue with their off-healing, which was recently nerfed. And Horseman Shamans are actually not complained about as much, but their off-healing is crazy. Um, Obviously, Boom can at least not so much, given that they have to cast their heals, so it's not as much of a factor. But either way, what do you guys feel about these hybrid off healing? Is it too much right now? Is it bad for the game? Like, what are your thoughts? I think it's been an issue, like uh, with hybrid off healing, um, for a long time. A lot of like at least BFA is a good example. It was the same thing in the first season, um, and I do think they should do some changes to it, um, just because it leads to like very. Like, obviously, it's a little more challenging in a sense that's a good thing because you need to make sure to, like, you know, crowd control the the, the enhancement or the red paladin in that sense. Either you, either you just stun and kill them or if you want to go on someone else, you need to CC them and then go on other guy, which obviously in some way increases the skill cap, but it also limits the amount of comps you play because some comps just can't keep up because, like, they don't have enough crowd control to, because they might only have like one stun or something to kill a comp that plays with a, an enhancement shaman or a red paladin. But then um, you introduce an issue where only some comps are capable of handling it. So does that mean the healing needs to be gutted so everyone can handle it? Or does that mean you need to make sure you play comps that do have enough cross CC to take out the hybrid and the off healing? Well... I mean, it depends kind of what way you're looking at. Do you want the meta to be, you know, have a lot of different comms or do you want, you know, just some comms survival? I think a big reason why Fire Mage Holy Pala is so good right now is because of, like, the amount of off-heals enhancement charm and red paladins can do. Just to give you an example, I do even think Broomkin has a very, like, has very good off fields if you choose to play, with, for example, with the Protector of the Growth TP talent. So I think it's, like, in my opinion, they should just, nerf the off healing and you know give the classes another way of you know making them viable through like another way because i think generally speaking playing with these classes like leads to like some you know scenarios where you feel like it's not really fair to face these like classes so you feel 
let's say because what you're basically saying is this needs to be a complete redesign so obviously we're talking a future expansion here you think that hybrids in the future should just be given more tools just like other classes that have no no they, as opposed they, they to shouldn't be they, they shouldn't like completely remove our feeling they should just make it put it to like a level where it's you know fair and if they're struggling after the uh, like after they would change it for example like the change it to word of glory let's say they were to do the same cha change to enhancement charm and maybe nerf word of glory even more from red paladin then i would say if they randomly turn out to be not viable anymore, then they would have to, you know, change other stuff to make them viable again. But I don't think when that, you, say you know, other having stuff, do you mean find the right tuning for the off heels? Find what feels right. Yes, exactly. Okay. Yes. So we're not talking about giving them a different set of tools. We're talking no, about no, no, no. Off heels are fine. It is. It just yeah, exactly. It just right needs to be balanced to way that you can deal with it. Yes, right. Mm, no, they're over tuned. I don't agree like... with Mario, to be honest. Yeah. I don't agree with him. Like, let's say you take a healing away from Red Tree Paladin. No one wants to play with that cause anymore because it, it brings nothing. Well, he's not saying taking it Except away completely. Just... He's saying yeah, but it down. even if you take it like now, like it's not completely broken because if it was, everyone would be just playing Red Paladin. So like no, you are right. saying right now to give a sheep cooldown because that's what you are saying right now. You don't want healing to be all the time coming from the hybrid causes, but you want the sheep coming from age all the time. Like, I don't agree. If you want to like change the hybrid healing, you should be like looking at the classes with CC as well. I agree that the, if you do, like for example, if you remove healing from rats, that uh, they're not really going to be viable. But uh, I actually think that it could be good if uh, these hybrid healers, if they did high healing, but maybe for example only on themselves, so they couldn't like do the yeah. same, they shouldn't be able to do the full amount on other players. But yeah, like I a rat, for example. I heard that argument a lot. I, I think they should just tune around that, to be honest. I think. But then, like... just like I said, like I don't think it's fair because, like, Mage, when he's dying, he's shipping for himself. But when his teammate is dying, he's also shipping for uh, his teammate. And it's the same thing. Ship is basically a heal because you are stopping one DPS from doing damage. Mm -hmm. and not just one, maybe two sometimes. I mean, it's is the that same thing. comparison? Like, Mara, do you agree that. Because uh, I, guess, I guess when you look at how does a hybrid heal appeal for their teammates? Well, they peel with healed. How does yeah. a mage peel for their teammates? Well, they peel with crowd control. So in some ways, there is a direct comparison between the two. But do you think that they can be compared in, in such a way? Like, does that... I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, you should, sure you can compare them in such a way, but it's like, it's a little bit of a weird comparison because one of them is like, like that, that, like sure, maybe mage, maybe did I? In my opinion, they should just balance around that. Like I said, I'm not saying they should completely remove fields from a red. They should completely remove fields from an enhancement from. They should just balance it around it. And I mean, you, we're talking about two specs right now that are hybrids that are way that have way, 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 way stronger off fields and healing than any other spec. Like a boomkin doesn't heal heals a decent amount, but nearly as much. An elemental shaman doesn't heal nearly as much. It's it's basically Boomkin, two outliers. You still, you still have a CC as Boomkin, spammable CC like a corn. So basically, I mean, Elder Shaman just... is nothing, but it's Elder Shaman the... is nothing, but you have uh, burst damage. You have really high burst. Yeah, uh, but that's what I mean. That's damage. that's how you balance these classes. You balance them and give them other ways. But I think having a ridiculous amount of healing just makes it so certain classes are not going to be viable, and that's why Mage is so strong right now because Mage is a class that can deal with that by crowd controlling them, but mm -hmm. other classes can't. I would say, like, if we, I don't know if you guys agree with me, but maybe a good reference point to, I would say, like, a decently balanced in terms of hybrid healing would probably be Shadow, Shadow Priest. I feel like it's not too low and it's not too ridiculously high. Um, I mean, they have a lot of tools, too. You know, they have, on top of having healing and shields, they can also, like, master spell. But I feel like in terms of pure, like, hybrid healing, like, uh, I, I feel like it balances fine i guess it's not like ridiculously high it's not ridiculously low and also like it, it, you oom like if you like cast like too many shadowmans you'll go oom um so you'll be you know you, you you have a resource you have a limit resource you can't just spam heals just kind of like a red could before it was just based on mm -hmm. holy power and it would heal like for so much um so i feel like and on top of that it's like casted right that that was like the problem with wog is it was instant so there was like not that much counterplay to it um, I feel like hybrid healing is okay when it's high if it's, if there's some form of it's counterplay, constant. I guess, in is a way. It, is that what it just comes down to? If a rat paladin was healing as much as they're healing right now with Wog, except it was a flash of light that they had to cast. Yeah, because a lot of a lot more classes could deal with it then. Not just mages. Or maybe Word of Glory could cost mana. 
So you cannot yeah, spam it all the time. A lot. We've heard that argument a lot, which I guess is similar to enhancement shamans, right? They their heals, man. I once they're um, they can't heal anymore. Yeah. And so although yeah. their heals are crazy I think that's, high, uh, that's, not that's yeah. Really. I don't think that's why I don't think enhancement shaman is broken then because like yeah, you cannot heal all the time. You can heal for some time, but then you go um and it's over. Right, and that's how you think it should be. Yeah, I don't think like red should be healing as much as healer, obviously, but it's hard to balance it. I would say. To make the cost still decent. Yeah. All right. Cool. Well, that's all we have time for today. Uh, thanks for joining me on this one. And thank, you, Brian. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> thanks, Brian. thanks, Brian. Thanks, Brian. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. And to everyone yes. else, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.